Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today I want to walk you around our gardens, the nursery, the production area, and show you how we are preparing for some very, very cold temperatures here in North Carolina. Now I know some of you folks who are in, you know, consistently cold climates, you have probably already like winterized or done things to prepare your gardens and your different areas around your house for extremely cold temperatures. Of course, here in North Carolina, we have relatively mild winters compared to the rest of the country, but we do have times where we have some really cold snaps and we are approaching that time um, <laughs> in the next coming days. Normally this will hit for us like in February. So December's a little bit unusual for us, but we are looking at temperatures as far as nighttime temperatures, 13, 15, 17 degrees, and they're all in a row. We have already had multiple freezes. We've had, I mean, like the low yesterday was 23. This morning was a little bit warmer, around 30 something. But the next couple of days, we're gonna have those really cold temperatures as this like Arctic blast moves down through the South. So this is for my folks. Maybe you are like me and you've done a couple of things right around your garden. Um, but you need to take those extra steps just to prepare and protect any areas that might need some attention. So I am going to just walk you through, show you what we are doing, and maybe hopefully it will help you because the last thing you want here at Christmas is to have to be dealing with, you know, busted water pipes or cracked fountains, whatever. So I'm just gonna take you along with me and show you all the fun things. <laughs> that we've been doing in the cold temperatures, getting ready for the even colder temperatures. Here I am in the back patio area, the gardens right around there. I wanted to start here because there's some things that I have already done. And most of this prep work we have already done. There's a couple of things that Jerry wants to make sure that we go ahead and get done or do, you know, before the next couple of days. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through. So here we are, of course, like I said, um, the garden shed is right there. Um, just to give you a little bit of a perspective of where we are. You will see that the top of my, this was, is, was a unique stone bird bath. I turned it into a planter. And so I will show you that in a minute. It's actually on the porch right now, but you will see the top is gone. The only other thing that for my Southern people is if you have camellias that are blooming before the freezes come um, and you have, if you have some really nice, pretty blooms, go ahead and cut them because when we hit 13, 17, 15 degrees, they're gonna get zapped. These have gotten a little bit um, burnt from the cold temperatures last night but they are a little bit protected. Um, this is the early wonder camellia, and you can see that that's probably my best flower right there. But camellias, of course, um, just are great um, for that winter color, of course, right? And they make great cut flowers. Christmas is right here. Go ahead and cut some, float them in a bowl on like your, a table or a display. They will be gorgeous. So go ahead and cut them before the freeze comes and it takes them out. So that's a little side note there for your camellias that you can take care of. Also right in here, you um, will remember, we're gonna go through the tea olives here, is that I have a unique stone fountain. We put that in the uh, late late summer i believe it was and we have gone ahead and drained it the, all of the fountains will have a little plug you can see right here that little white hole it um comes with a for lack of a better word like a little rubber plug that you plug it up and so that way is what, that's what keeps the water in and then when you're ready to drain it you just pop that out and all the water drains out so the fountain can stay just like this all winter long you'll see that i have a piece sitting right here that is um when the fountain is going it will go in and cover this spot right here the pump is right there because there's no water in there it is perfectly fine i don't have to re um, like completely disassemble this fountain and take the pump out now if you're in a completely different zone if you're in minnesota or 
Maine or somewhere like that. You may have different requirements if you have a fountain. Maybe you need to cover it. I don't know. I am not an expert in those super cold areas. So I would encourage you to reach out to either some fellow gardeners or your local garden center. If you if this is your first winter with the fountain, talk to them. I am not an expert, so I'm just going to tell you what I know will work here for us because this will work, it'll be fine, and they will do well. So winterize your fountain. If you've not done that, and you're going to have really cold temperatures because you don't want this thing just full of ice, and it's not necessarily that the structure itself is in danger, but it's your pump, right? It's your pump and it's all your tubing because if it's full of water, as that ice free as the water freezes into ice it expands and it can crack your pump you don't want to have to do that so just make sure you take care of those items now plant wise what do i have to do plant wise not a darn thing for my gardens i am just going to leave them alone they are perfectly fine these plants are in the ground they can handle it and they can do just fine now Maybe I'll have a little bit of damage, um, like as far as like the plants getting burnt back. We've talked about this. Y'all were with me when I trimmed back these salvias. Like I said, the other night was 23 and they are still doing really well. Now, when we hit that 13, they may go ahead and get zapped back. You can see over here is the rocking salvias not quite as green and then my guara is um it's hanging out it's got a couple of little little bit of foliage on it but for the most part um you know everything is fine so i don't have to worry about my plants in my garden if you have something that is on a borderline for you that may be um let's say, like I said, it's just a borderline plant, it is certainly not gonna hurt for you to use some sort of fabric cloth to cover that plant, to insulate it. Let me show you what I'm talking about because I do have over here some camellias that have not been put in the ground yet. And camellias sometimes for us can be a little bit iffy as far as like we might be too cold for them. So if I want to, um, I do have some landscape fabric, um, like some, a frost protection blanket that I could use to come over here and just kind of lay over this to help. So here are, this is part of my little stash. And so you can see these camellias right here. These are all camellias that need to be planted. Again, we've talked about this before. You can scooch your pots together um, and then any kind of fabric will work really well that you can leave on for you know more than just that night you never want to use plastic to cover your plants in if you're worried about a freeze or a frost plastic will burn them do not use plastic use a fabric so an old sheet an old quilt burlap bags from a unique stone the frost protection blanket those are all great things to use to protect your plants um, just stay away from plastic no trash bags none of that kind of stuff i have used in the past um buckets like if it's a small pot like a bucket or um, an old nursery pot that works fine because it's not like laying on the plant so that's just a little idea and then we have gone through also and started to disconnect all of the hoses from the spigots this spigot is actually like a frost proof freeze proof um, spigot so the spigot itself is fine but we did go ahead obviously turn the water off and disconnect the hose um, I know that may sound obvious to turn the water off of any hoses that are connected and to disconnect the hose but um, I think we've all been there before and done that I know with this spot right here I always leave that spigot on because this is what I use to water um, you know my, my secret stash back there and we forget that the water's on and then you hit that 13 degree night and then it warms up again and you come back and there's a major crack in it and it's all shooting out water. I've never done that before. <laughs> I really have. Um, so yeah, so just go around and disconnect all your hoses and those kinds of things. So that's all I'm gonna do here at the house. Disconnect the hoses, um, fountain is disassembled, emptied plants are fine i may just cover those camellias that kind of thing very very easy around here so let's go over to the retail area um, the nursery part and then we're going to head up to production because those are completely different beasts that we have to really kind of pay attention for and um, we'll take care of those in a different manner 
Here we are at the retail portion of Creekside, and we are standing out here, of course, in front of our pergola. And if you are familiar with Creekside and any of our videos, nursery tours here at the nursery, you will remember that we have two very large aqua pots in front of the pergola. You can see them right behind me. Aqua pots we love. They are the self-watering uh, containers. It's a great collaboration between basically three different sets of folks. You have Jack Barnwell, who is the landscaper who designed the mechanics of it. We have Michael Carr, who is the artist who designs the containers themselves, and then Proven Winners. And we love these aqua pots because they are just fantastic. They work great. They're very simple. They're very simple to use. Highly, highly effective. Another reason that we love the aqua pots as opposed to other self-watering containers is that they are gorgeous ceramic glazed pottery. And I mean, this is, these are no chintzy, I mean, you can look at Brenna and see how tall they are, um, but just gorgeous ceramics. And with our temperatures being in 13, 15, 17 degrees, um, I have to make sure that these are empty because if you can notice um, how wet the ground is right here, Meredith and Emily were helping me today getting some um, odds and ends done and so I put them in charge of emptying these aqua pots. So all the water that you see, the wet areas, that is from the water from the aqua pots because basically depends on the pot, but let's say roughly anywhere from one third to one half the lower end of the aqua pot will be filled with water. So if you can see right here, if I can, you can see that little hole, this is the overflow hole. So because the pot's upside down, so everything from this hole all the way up was filled with water. We've been getting lots and lots of rain. So these two babies were just absolutely filled with water. If I had left these aqua pots in that same manner with that much water in them and we have multiple nights of 13, 15, 17, and then we're, then we're in the 20s. So if I have them like that, the likelihood of them freezing, maybe not freezing solid, but they're going to freeze some, um, I could possibly risk cracking my aqua pots. Now, I tell people, our customers who buy aqua pots from us, this is what I do. I'm going to let you make your own decision on how you want to treat your aqua pot. My aqua pot on the front porch, I tip it, let all the water out, and I leave it in the wintertime, and it's perfectly fine. Up at the driveway, same thing. You saw me just the other day. I tipped it over, got all the water out, and then it's fine. These, I'm just going to go ahead and empty. Because it is at the nursery, we're not, we don't have customers. I'm not going to be dealing with them. I don't like the aqua pots. I don't want to have, you know, to worry about does it have, you know, is it going to freeze? Does it have too much water? I would rather just go ahead and empty them, turn them upside down, and leave them for the winter. So if you're in that position and you're, you don't know whether you want to or not, then, um, then you just get to decide for yourself. For me, it's not worth losing these aqua pots with them cracking um, for just a couple of months when I'm not gonna be using them anyway. So that's what I do. As long as you have them turned upside down, then they will be perfectly fine. They can handle really, really cold temperatures. I know Jack Barnwell with Mackinac Island, he just empties them, does exactly this, turns them upside down. As long as they're not holding water, they are perfectly fine and will be good. Um, Brenna found a pot, so I apologize if you hear a ruckus behind me. The dog found an empty pot and um, yeah, she's, she's going down to town on that pot. So I'm gonna grab that pot from her so that she won't be such a distraction. And then we're gonna go in the greenhouse and talk about what we have to do inside of there. So here we are inside of the empty greenhouse. It has a little bit of an echo in here because it is empty, but man, don't those tables look great since the girls got them all stained? Fantastic. Now. Here we are in the retail portion of the greenhouse, right? And this space is heated. So we've got two heaters in this greenhouse. Um, those are the, the big boxes that you see hanging from the roof up there. Those are the heaters. We uh, use propane, so no, natural gas. 
natural gas. So that's what it looks like these are inside. They're not inside. There is a wall between them. Um, this is a <laughs> the clear walls. So somebody asked one time, they're like, I thought you couldn't have tanks inside the greenhouse. They're not. It's just really good clear glass. Um, so this space is heated. That is why you will notice that the hoses have not been disconnected over here. Right above the mangaves, the hose is still connected right there. We do not have to disconnect that in here because this is a heated space and it is in, um, it's inside. So naturally it is going to have warmer temperatures in here. Also, um, we have the, another fountain, a unique stone fountain in the greenhouse um, just for you know aesthetics and ambiance here in the greenhouse. You will see it has been disconnected. That's more so of so that we could clean it at the end of the season and then what you know why do we need to be running the fountain when the nursery is closed, the retail portion is closed. It just doesn't make any sense to have to worry about the fountain running um, while it's closed. So we went ahead, took it apart, cleaned it, um, and it's just gonna sit here until we're ready to open again in February. Then we'll put it back together, get the water going, and it'll be just fine. But if we wanted to have it running, we certainly could do that because of this greenhouse being heated. We have um, the mangaves in here. So both the ones that were in my landscape and then the ones that we have for sale uh, for retail. So we will keep this, I was talking to Jerry last night, we're gonna set the thermostat for like 40. So if it gets below 40, the heat will turn on. Certainly it's not gonna be like a tropical greenhouse in here, but it will keep the edge off of the plants and with the irrigation, you know, the, the water and all that. So I thought it would be fun. I wanna show you um, kind of the innards. I don't think we've ever shown you inside of this closet in here. So back here um, on the back side of the greenhouse, we have this little building that uh, we built. And it, so it's basically like Jerry's supply closet. So right here, what you see, this is the fertigation system. So you've heard us talk about a fertigation, <laughs> fertigation system before. Fertigation is just a combination of fertilizer and irrigation. So this is the way that we can fertilize our plants while we water them. So this is the whole system because this is insulated and it's protected. We do not have to take this apart. It is different up at the production area, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So it's insulated building, perfectly fine. But over here, we have what the Bartlett Climate Boss. Um, hopefully this will show you, but you, we can set the different temperatures, the different modes, well, we can set it for during the day, we can set it for during the night. Um, right now, the nighttime temperatures are like around uh, like 45, 43, somewhere around there. Um, Jerry will come back in here and tweak it just a little bit. And so this is what the system is that will actually control when the heat turns on and we, when the heat turns off. So everything is automated. Jerry can easily set it and kind of set it and forget it, essentially. Of course, he'll have to come back in here and check just to make sure things are running as they should because, you know, that's just a part of gardening, farming is sometimes there are failures and you just have to make sure that everything's okay. So that's what the deal is here. Um, so w once we're inside and it's nice and warm, um, there's very little worry that we have to focus on there. But outside, you will remember that we have been doing a lot of work on the shrub lot and we kind of redid the irrigation um, and areas like that. So I was talking to Jerry about that and he said because some of his um, different valves and, and things were were exposed that he's going to have to um, insulate those some. So basically what he's going to do is take some big bags of soil, right? Like the professional bags of soil that we have and just kind of cover them <laughs> on top of them. So that way it'll insulate it and he won't have to worry about it. So we did over here at the barn, go ahead and take our hose link down. So if you're familiar with what a hose link is, it's that retractable hose. 
It's fantastic. So we have one over here um, on the pole. It's, so it's set up and you can see where um, kind of the holder is. Jerry went ahead and took it down, of course, disconnected it from yet another one of those freeze poop, freeze proof pipes. So this is turned off. There's no hoses connected to it. Hose link is off taken up you know down and it is put into the storage where it will be nice and safe so over here that's kind of the deal what's happening with that we don't really have to worry about the um the pipes as far as on the new shrub lot what they redid those ones that are exposed because there's no water in them that has not been running yet there so there's no water in those pipes so that is all good i think think I can show you if he hasn't covered them up yet. Let me go look and see if those different valves and everything are um, still exposed. So I'm not quite sure where he was talking about that he has some plumbing exposed because I thought maybe it was this little spot right back here but you can see that the cover is on it and all the soil has been put back and the gravel has been put back. So wherever it is that he's talking about I'm sure he will take care of it. There's a lot of different areas of irrigation <laughs> on this property. The one last thing I was gonna tell you down here while we're here, I am a huge bird, a birder, a bird watching fan. I love watching the birds. And the winter time is one of the great times to do it because I have, I have my feeders out year round, but especially in the winter because you can see them. Um, and so I have a feeder and I don't wanna to get too close. I don't wanna disturb them. Uh, but over there, um, kind of straight where Brenna is beyond her in the tree, there is a feeder right there. And it's currently covered with lots of birds. Um, so if you enjoy the birds, I would highly encourage you to set out your feeders. I have multiple kinds of feeders. I have to have all the squirrel proof feeders because I don't mind feeding the squirrels, but you know what? There's tons of food on the ground for the squirrels. And when they get on my feeders, then they're bullies and they won't let any of the birds on there. So I have the, um, the different squirrel proof feeders. I have them, I have them linked. Um, and I have a couple that I have found that are totally squirrel proof. I've never seen squirrels on them. So if you check out, I'll have them linked for you that you can go look at them if you're interested. But I have found that for my birds, we have lots of songbirds, tons of different kinds. They like the black oiled sunflower seeds and then the thistle seeds or the Niger, 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 um, I don't know how you say it, um, seeds. So I do a combination of that and man, I get all sorts of birds. So right now I can see um, a male cardinal, a tufted titmouse, a Carolina chickadee, and there goes Brenna, she found them too. <laughs> Sorry y'all. Um, so those are great. And then of course in the winter time we do the suet feeders because they love, those birds need to have a little bit of that extra fat. And so they love to have those. So anyway, that's just a little side note is how I also prepare my winter gardens is to have my bird feeders because I do enjoy having my bird feeders out and seeing those sweet birds. And Jackson, in fact, he always laughs and he remembers, he's like, mama, I remember that time the snow was coming down. We got a snowstorm and you made me go out there and fill up all your bird feeders. And I was like, yep, I sure did. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, that was years ago, but he still remembers that. So yes, take care of your little feathered friends and uh, they will bring you lots of songs and chirping and tweeting and lots of fun. So one last area I wanna take you up to is to production because that is definitely a whole different beast where we really have to be concerned about these cold temperatures coming in. So here we are up at the production area and I found the spot that Jerry was talking about where he had some irrigation still exposed. So this area right here, um, this is of course we are, I uh, give you a little perspective of where we are. There is the production area. This is the new shrub lot that we have installed, gosh, end of summer. And this is the area where you can see the flags, the, the pile of dirt. Um, there's a little cover right here, the black and green cover. And then the, the bag of soil is right there as well. Um, there is a little bit of a hole right there where it's still exposed. <laughs> I'm thinking that he lost one of his bags. Can you see that bag, uh, that bag down there? then he'll bring that bag and put it right here. Because just by adding that 
bag of potting soil right there, it acts like, of course, insulation, just as if it were buried. He's not ready to bury it yet. That is why he's putting the bags of soil on top of it and not using that pile of, of dirt and putting back into the hole. There's still some more work to be done right there. So that is what he is doing. So if there's, you know, you've got something exposed that needs to be covered, but you're not done with the project yet, just improvise. It's fine. It is all good. Um, and then of course, here we are. Um, you can see beyond me is all of the shrubs on the shrub lot. We've talked about this before in case you missed it. Um, for the winter, we do not cover our plants. These, um, you know, are, are really kind of cold tolerant plants. Again, we typically don't have these kind of temperatures. And so one way that we combat dealing with cold temperatures and trying to insulate the plants is that we really scooch them very close together. So you can see here in front of me, I've got some barberries that you can see how nice and tight they are right there together. Um, just putting those pots together like this helps to insulate them and keeps them nice and happy, gives them some warmth as our, I believe this, yep, that's the gardenia right there. So nice and tight with each other. The one area that we may have to go ahead and cover that he was talking about were the perennials. So we've got frost protection blankets up here in the dry storage. I'll, I'll show those to you. Here we are in the dry storage. The frost protection blankets are the ones, are the white ones that have been folded up nice up there. Now you can get frost protection blankets in different thicknesses. I do not know what the rating is on this one. Uh, Jerry's not here, so I can't quite ask him about that, but they are um, just great to have. Of course, I mean, if you have them, then use them. If you don't, don't worry about it. Use sheets like old sheets, old beach towels. Use those and those will be fine. Um, coming in here, we're in the annex. The fellas um, are taking a lunch break, but they have gotten this other side uh, <laughs> all nice and framed in, at least on this side, so you can get kind of an idea of, of how things are gonna look as far as it would be a solid wall here and then coming down and we'll have um, the little hallways going into the, the greenhouses. So Emily and Mayor are continuing to uh, do up some pots, but what I was gonna show you because we are in production one. This is unheated as of right now. Jerry has ordered the heater. It is on its way, but it is not here yet and it is not hooked up. So because of that, he has disconnected all of the hoses and then where Brenna is, um, is where the fertigation system um, would be. So this would be just like when we were down at the retail portion, that fertigation system sits right here. So you can tell that he has disconnected it, it is gone because if he does not do that, then they will crack. All of this water has been turned off, so these pipes are fine. Once we get heat in here, it will not be, um, you know, we can leave the fertigation system in here and everything will be fine. But until that happens, we have to be, of course, preventative. So the main things to think about when you are looking at your garden, when you have extremely cold temperatures, of course, is water. What kind of water do you have? Where can it freeze? Where can it crack? What can it, you know, bust, whether it's a fountain or hoses or pipes. So take those measures. Then, you know, if you have certain plants that you need to go ahead and protect, go ahead and protect them. If you can bring them into like a garage or even just an unheated area, just that little bit of buffer will help tremendously or if you need to cover them go ahead and cover them um, but yeah so those are just some some things that we're doing around here to get ready for these really cold temperatures for us and um, yeah the season is still young as far as the winter so i'm officially winter yet we still got uh well i think tomorrow i think tomorrow is the first day of winter and uh so january and february of course are those cold months so we'll be prepared when it comes as always, y'all stay nice and toasty and warm wherever you may be. Uh, have a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and thanks so much for going to the Creek Side. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.